Yeah, did we have a sign up sheet? Well, no, I didn't. Okay. I just figured that. There is no one sign up to speak against any of these matters. All right. Our first item for consideration today is House Bill 438. Representative Gardner. Uh, I think if, uh, if it's all right with you, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to start with the member of the Atlanta City Council who brought this bill to me, Congress, uh, Council. Council, Councilwoman Joyce Shepard is here, and I would like you all to hear the problem that she's trying to solve. I think you have to come. Thank you. If you will uh, just come up and identify yourself, we are honored to have you. This is my first. Uh, thank you all for allowing me to speak. I'm Joy Shepard, Atlanta City Council. I represent District 12, but this particular bill that I'm talking about is really relevant to all of the city of Atlanta. Uh, we have been having a series of problems for years now. I've introduced a bill several years ago about ATVs and uh, where they are actually literally taking over our streets in urban cities. I've become very educated on ATVs and what they do. I've met with Mr. Powell uh, here a couple of weeks, oh, there he is, uh, a couple of weeks ago talking about ATVs and even understanding the relationship of an ATV in a rural or suburban environment compared to an urban environment. ATVs has become this new phenomenon in the city of Atlanta and urban cities where they literally are driving over in our streets on a consistent basis uh, with literally no regard to laws. They're doing willies, they're speeding, they're making noise, they come in packs, they're literally taking over our streets. Citizens across the city are just saying, what are we gonna do as a city? So we are here, we talked about last year ATVs. Now I understand in rural environments that in terms of ATVs, they are not and actually state law says that they are not allowed to be on state highways and state streets. But there is a disregard for that in the city of Atlanta uh, where their position is they can be on that streets and that they can have the right to be on the streets. We know ATVs in terms of how they're built, they have no lights, they have no safety barriers, that there's no helmets, there's none of that. And folks are riding them all over the place crazy. So we've been looking at, on, from a city side, and I also have the Atlanta Police Department here with us. We have Major Coy, who's here from the Police Department, to talk about that if you want to talk to him in terms of what, how much it's been a problem in our city. The problem is, even after we take them, in terms of state law, taking them off the street, we've got to put some teeth in it so that they just don't do what they need to do. So the amendments we have before you today is literally talking about that in terms of forfeiture and other things that we can do to really make it something that will be strong so that as we take them off the streets, that we can, there are some accountability and teeth in terms of making sure that they don't just t continuously disregard uh, what's happening in terms of law. So I plan to package this, what we passed today with new laws for the city saying no B ATVs and making it very clear and strong so that we can send a strong message to the ATV riders that they cannot be on the streets of Atlanta, but I need the help with this legislation today in order to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilman, would you just hold a second? We have a question from Representative Bridges. Uh, thank you. I'm not, I've never been in uh, city government, but if they're not allowed to be on the, on the road and you're having a trouble here, how can y'all not enforce have not the law now? We have not, even though they have not allowed to be on the road, that seems to be um, our council and the law department now. We're saying we're gonna, we actually have laws so we can say we can put it on there, but we have not made that happen. When we make that happen, what we wanna do, and that's what we plan to do this year, is to literally, from your state law says, they can't be on the roads, period. But as a part of that, making sure that when that happens, what happens if they go on the roads? There's this whole group and gangs of, of these guys who are saying, catch us if you can. What you gonna do to us, you know? And if you catch us, okay, we'll pay a little small fine and we're gonna be back out on the roads. 
So what we're trying to do is send a message that says, okay, if we catch you now, if we see them, the police department has a right to come up to them uh, and just say you can't be on the roads. By the way, we can't chase. Also, we have a no chase po policy with the city, so we can't chase them. But if we become tough and saying they can't be on the streets, uh, then we can have also Chief that says, and if we catch you doing this, we're going to confiscate your vehicle and we're going to make it really tough for you. So that's what we're trying to do. And, and forgive me. So you're wanting us to pass a law with the whole state of Georgia saying that nobody can have it. Well, it could be for this, or if it's not for the state of Georgia, for the city of Atlanta. Okay, so this should just be for the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm good. All right, not you. just for the city of Atlanta, not the state of Georgia. City, okay. Of, okay. city of Atlanta. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Chairman Caldwell has a question. Chairman. Other questions? I don't yeah. For either councilwoman or me. For the councilman. I don't know if this mic is, is, is on, but if the council. I'm sorry. You're wanting a law just for the city of Atlanta? Yes. Well, why don't you just it's pass an ordinance within the city of Atlanta? So from what I was told that in this particular is issue, I can't, in terms of forfeiture, it can't be just for the city of Atlanta. It would well, that's to. my next question. Yes. That was what my understanding and was. Please understand, I'm not against your bill of trying to enforce this. I've seen it on the television, not in person, because I don't live here. But I get the... Atlanta News, so I, I've seen what the problem you've got. That. And please understand where I come from. I was district attorney 15 years, and I was superior court judge 15 years. And when you start forfeiting somebody's property, that's pretty draconian. And you're going to have a misdemeanor. It's what you call it, a misdemeanor. But then you're going to forfeit somebody's property over it. Now... I personally cannot vote for that with that type of provision in it for a misdemeanor. Now, if you then want to say that after they have been convicted of this the third time or more that it then becomes a felony, and I'm not, quote, trying to tell you how to fix your bill, but when you go through forfeiture, that's for usually you say the worst of the worst, uh, the big drug dealers or some other type of activity where the district attorney or maybe the solicitor, depending on the situation, has to go through a long litany of procedure and how to forfeit to be able to take that property and put it up for public sale or use it for the public use or whatever you got to do. And that's a long, drawn-out process. And you even say at the top of this, the first time when you just in private property, it's only a civil penalty of $100. Then you say, but if it's driven on the street, I guess then in Section 2 it becomes a misdemeanor but you're then going to forfeit somebody's property for that. And I just, I can't correlate the two. It's, it, that's a minor offense for which you're trying to then take somebody's personal property. And I understand. I think that's just way too far. And I would only suggest that maybe you have a provision that says after being convicted, like you do in other statutory provisions, the second, third, or fourth time, it then becomes a felony. Then you got some real teeth to go after that person, but that's that's my statement. Okay. <coughs> uh, okay. I'm sorry. No. Well, I, I I would contemplate, if necessary, uh, taking out the delete the forfeiture piece, uh, and we can m move forward in terms of. And that's some of your ideas, I'm hearing in the back of some of the great ideas, and we would have to go back and look at that a little farther. Hey, I, I would just suggest maybe what you may want to do is let Representative Gardner maybe touch this bill up uh, and those type of provisions and, and come back with it. It's, it's all I'm suggesting. But our goal is to get it passed this year. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Representative Alexander. Well, no, I was just going to ask you. That. I wouldn't, I mean, for something small like this, it shouldn't be a felony. So I, I heard what the judge say, but that felony for something like this shouldn't be a felony. Well, that's mm -hmm. right. well certainly so not the first time yeah. or the first yeah. second time or so yeah. what I think I'm asking the committee to do yeah. perhaps is to take out the last sentence in line 67 through 70 and see if we can work on what might be an, uh, an a more appropriate penalty. I, I think the judge has a, probably a pretty good argument. Uh, we, we want the police in the city of Atlanta to have the support of the state to be able to do what they need to do. 
uh, it, it doesn't work just to apply this to the city of Atlanta. It, it really is important. So if you would take the first step and make it clearly a felony to be on the streets and, and see if we can work with the police department. Not a felony, a misdemeanor, excuse me. Not a felony, a misdemeanor. It is it's currently a misdemeanor with a fine up to $100. So I think that would satisfy the city of Atlanta. I think it makes a statement to allow the, the police department to go forward. So I am happy if you would like to propose, Judge, that we take out those lines. Well, I, I would certainly propose that you take out those line, Representative, and then come back with a bill that, you know, in, in the shape and then present it to the committee, and I think we could possibly then act on it. Uh, but I just think to take the property with this is, I think, is a little overboard based on what you got to do to forfeit. Right. And right. I don't know if your DA wants to get tied up in that for somebody riding a motorcycle or type our situation on the road one time. Our DA has plenty to do. I, right. I, yes. Right. Um, so I would make that recommendation if somebody would like to make that motion that we l would delete lines 67 beginning with any. President Garner, let me ask you this. I'm going to <coughs> recommend that you... Uh, that we hold this bill, you get with Judge Caldwell or anyone you've seen okay. appropriate and uh, see if we can get a better understanding of where we need to be with this. We have plenty of time to, to have We have bill. plenty of time, you're sure? We do. I am worried about the time. So I know could you are. When do you expect to meet next? We'll meet next week. Okay, early next week, I hope. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Are there any other questions about the bill before we go and meet with the judge and see what we, he can come up with? <coughs> Representative, uh, Representative, the pro like I said, the, if we do this, it's going to be a law statewide. Right. And and I live in North Georgia, and uh, and I don't want to get a hundred dollar ticket for going across the road from my farm to get gas on a four wheeler or something like that. So I would suggest that we put something since this is a, a, a problem here, maybe some wordage in there uh, within the sides of the city limits of a metro area or something like that, because you've got a lot of rural areas that people, they, they'll cross from one farm to the next or run down the road on the ATV or UTV. Uh, and so I think that would, uh, I think that'd help out a lot. Well, in the, in we did spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to do that. So if you have some suggestions that you can bring to us, but in, the f in section one, it talks about the <coughs> exemptions for, for various other kinds of places where the we know the I ATVs are on uh, farm property and Right, right. But if I go across my road, I'm on a state highway then. And so then under this, I'm going to, then here I'm going to be guilty as these gangs down here in Atlanta that's running around on ATVs and y'all streets. Uh, and that's where, I mean, that's where this bill originated from, correct? Is, is that right? No, I think it's, it's a metro problem, but it's not just unique in Atlanta. It is true in Augusta, I'm told, and some of the other cities where but there are, you know, you can't really chase these kids through the city, right, city right. And streets. I, and, and that's, I mean, all those areas are considered metro, are they not? Or city limit? Or Pretty much, I think so. So I think that would take care of all of those and still re leave rural Georgia out out of this equation. Right. I support, I mean, I, I, I like what you're trying to do. I just Representative, let's going. move on. We uh, we pretty well established a framework for you to move in. Right. It's uh, Friday. We have people ready to leave and long distance travel, and uh, we have Chairman Willard with us, who Good. I look forward to meeting with you all early next week. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Our next item will be uh, House Bill 417, Chairman Willard, uh, to present to us. Thank you for having the meeting today, Mr. Chairman. And hearing my bill, this is a bill that uh, we're working off LC. 391625TS. And this came to me through uh, Mo Thrash and John Halliburton. They represent the Towers Association. That's T O W E R S. That is the companies that go out when you have a car wreck, bring the damaged vehicles into a tow yard, uh, somebody abandons a car on the street or in a private property and calls a towing company and they're bring the cars in 
to a lot. And the purpose of this is really we already have laws on the books dealing with it. But what we're trying to do is a couple of things. I say one of the main things we want to do is get to a uniform form to be used because it becomes a problem around the state with the different courts having their own forms and trying to have the forms be sure they comply with what we're directing people to do under the law, the towing companies especially, how to get the cars either disposed of through a foreclosure sale of the, the, uh, the sale for paying the towing charges if necessary and the storage charges. So the bill, which we already say, that's all already authorized. We're, we're trying to do three things I'll talk about. It. One is there's nothing in the law yet dealing with trailers. So now we've included the fact that somebody abandons a trailer. That can be brought in and disposed of like an automobile has been abandoned. The other thing we're doing is recognizing what we call an authorized entity to have access to the Department of Revenue's lien holder and vehicle owner database for these companies. And there's already companies existing doing that. It's just to recognize this is how the system can be used by the towers to have that accessibility rather than disturbing and involving the uh, Department of Revenue directly on it. And the third thing I said was the standardized of the affidavit that need a standard form which will be prepared by the uh, Judicial Council of Georgia, uh, really working with the magistrate judges and the state court judges to get a proper form that all the courts will use. So those are the things we're trying to accomplish. The bill's been cut down quite a bit. I want to commend our dear lady and legislative council. Jenna's done an outstanding job <laughs> trying to work this thing through with us over the last couple of months. Uh, different people had different concerns, but the main thing is we've, we think we've got down to the minimum things that can and should be done. I'd be glad to answer questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any questions or comments? How you doing? Chairman Caldwell. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm, I'm supportive of the bill. Don't misunderstand. Yes, sir. I'm looking in Section 1 under the definition Yes, the word trailer. Yes. Now that may be have a different connotation where you live than where I live. But where I live, that's usually a place that a lot of times where somebody is living and it's being drawn <laughs> by a motor vehicle. And uh, right. I just want to make sure that we're not including that in this definition. I hope not, uh, Judge. What we said here is, is being drawn by a motor vehicle. So most of those ones. I guess it can't be drawn by a motor vehicle. Yeah. So I don't know how else you bring it down. I mean, the thing we're looking at here by. Oh, and, and I'm not missing. Yeah. I, I think okay. you're perfectly all right. I'm just, yeah. like I say, if. It, it has to be apply. abandoned. Yeah. First of all, it has to be abandoned. But those things also have a different form. They're titled documents. Yeah, You've got to get a title. That's right. These are different. These are not titled. And it might, it might put that in there as being a trailer means an untitled vehicle right. with or without motor power. Right. Well, I'd thank be you, able Chairman. To do that. Well, Representative McLean. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And also, I, I guess thank you too, Judge, because I was on line 42 too, but since uh, Chairman Willard has already did a great job of explaining yeah. because I put trailer, boat trailer, horse trailer, line trailer, just, right and I wanted to make sure that almost the same identical thing, so thank you. So I do think if we can, if you can identify yeah, that, it'll be a whole lot. Yes, sir. I'm going to put something in whether we get ready to talk about it. Any other questions, Mr. Chairman? I see none, Mr. Chairman. Well, I represent the valley side. Jenna? I guess what I'm trying to oh. understand, uh, Mr. Chairman, what, yes, what currently is being done? Well, what's currently being done, uh, Madam, is the, the – uh, the towing companies, uh, I know in the, here in the, the Fulton County, <laughs> we got a large backlog because of the uncertainty about when the affidavit comes in from the tower, and the question comes down, well, did you meet all the requirements of the law? And, and, and this causes a backup of, in their case, I might have to call John, one of these gentlemen might be able to better give you the in-life experience about it, but there's, there's differing forms being used by various courts, and so we want to just come up with a uniform form so all the courts have the same responsibilities to look at what things need to be completed 
as a means of going through the foreclosure of that vehicle. There's a notice provision that goes out. It's all spelled out in the law. Let this gentleman maybe right. answer your question. Right. If you're pleased to identify yourself, sir. Uh, yes, my name is Phil Howard. I'm the president of the Towing Recovery Association of Georgia and also a uh, towing company owner. Um, <clears throat> is your question in regard to the magistrate court procedure, ma'am? It's in regards to why we're having to put legislation in place. Mm -hmm. What is currently going on and what is the reason for this legislation? The, uh, the issue with the, the definitions, the current definition of a trailer, there's some judges that are interpreting that not to include certain types of trailers because of an antiquated definition that's on the law, uh, on the books. So we're trying to clarify that so that it does include tractor trailers, uh, large, maybe possibly boat trailers, things like that. Uh, as far as the uh, electronic access for the authorized entity, uh, we passed a bill in 2009, or you, uh, the, the legislative body passed a bill in 2009 that we thought would correct this problem and provide, and we've actually been ac accessing that information through an entity, but uh, there are, again, some judges that think the language is not clear, and so they have recommended that we try to clarify that language for that purpose. So that's why we're trying to uh, address the definition of uh, the authorized entity. As far as the uh, affidavit goes, uh, uh, as uh, Representative Willard said, there's 159 different counties. So we have 159 different magistrate judges that are using some 100 different types of forms. Some of them will use the same forms that they've shared among each other. What we're trying to do is say that it, it'd be easier for the towers if everybody was on the same page, everybody was using the same form and required to submit the same information when we're asking for these uh, abandoned motor vehicle court orders so we can get rid of these abandoned cars. Um, and I think that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Representative, recognizing Representative Powell. Well, Excuse me, Chairman. Well, they had to go through that process. Well, don't you all want to have a division going to say, well, there's a process to go to state and dispose of it. So, like Mike said, a lot of it goes in regular the car, tow truck, or reefer body, or anything such as that. A lot of times when they have absolutely no value, right. the people don't have the title, they don't have it, the reason. So be, be clear, that's right. If it has value, everybody's going to get noticed. The lien holders will get noticed. The owner of the title of the owner of the vehicles get noticed. If it came off a private location, they get noticed. So it's not a way of trying to acquire property improperly. This is, like you say, they're, they're considered to be uh, abandoned because they're practically worthless except for junk metal. Right, it doesn't change the process that we currently use to dispose of abandoned vehicles. All the notification processes are still there. Uh, the, if, if there is any value, of course, there's a provision that provides the overages submitted to the courts if there's you know, uh, surplus funds from a sale. So, but 99.9% .9 of the time, that never happens either. So yes, to your point, sir, yes, that's correct. Thank you, Chairman. You have another? We have uh, Representative Alexander. We'll recognize one for the time. Okay. And the I guess what I want to know, I see 30 days. Has it always been 30 days or is this new? What line is that, ma'am? Uh, oh, yeah, 14. this is on line 33. 14. 14. 14. Within a period of 30 days. Yes. It's that always been. Okay. okay. Unless correct. it's underlined, it's, it's 30 days now. Right. Yes, okay. Chairman Powell. Now's the time. Have a, have a motion in a second. All in favor of the motion? You want me to make a change to that one thing? Okay. All Let right. me say on line 42, Mr. Chairman, I'll say trailer means every vehicle with or without motor power which is not titled and designated for being drawn by a motor vehicle. So put it in there, which is not titled, and oh. 
Well, that's different. I'm talking about recorded like a state motor vehicle title. Yeah. One minute. Uh, okay. Have a motion and a second. In discussion. Are you looking for illustrious? <laughs> That's right. Representative <laughs> Douglas. That's right. That's right. Okay. Luminary, how's that? <laughs> Thank you. All right. No up. further discussion. We'll ask all in favor of the motion as amended or to say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Ladies Chairman. Being no further business, stand adjourned.